There are times in my life when I look back and I know that I was expecting God to move one way and he moved another. I look back at my life and I thought maybe God was going to heal somebody and he didn't. He, well, he did. He did it by taking them to heaven. There are times in my life when I thought God was going to put all this in order the way I thought it should be and he didn't. Can you believe that? Have you ever gone through times like that when you thought God was going to do one thing and then he did another? Have you gone through anything in your life when you thought that God was going to come through in a certain way and then he came through, but in a different way? I want us to put our trust in God that he knows what's best for all of us and in every situation. And sometimes we don't understand it and sometimes we don't like it. But God is good. Amen. He is faithful. Amen. Today we're going to look at a story in Luke chapter 7, a story I think many of you might be familiar with, a story about Jesus going to the home of a Pharisee. And the Pharisee invited Jesus over with an idea in mind, and then the party was crashed by a woman. And it kind of turned things upside down. And we're going to read that story today in Luke chapter 7. Verses 36 through 50, if you want to read along with me. It says, when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar a perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair and kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owned, owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them could pay the money to him or pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. As her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Wow. What an incredible story. I love this story. But we could spend a month on this story. We could look at so many things from this story. We could talk about the perfume and how much it costs. We could talk about the alabaster box that it was in. We could talk about the symbolism of anointing Jesus. We could talk about how Jesus was the Lamb of God and how she was preparing the Lamb for sacrifice. We could talk about the bigger and the lesser debts. I mean, we could talk about so many things. 
the time this morning, we're not going to go cover all of that. What I want us to look at is, is that Jesus made a comparison. He said to the Pharisee, now look at the woman. He, he made a comparison of the, the two. And they had a totally different approach to Jesus. They had a totally different attitude toward Jesus. You see, the Pharisee, he invited Jesus to his house, right? He said the Pharisee invited him to his house, and so Jesus came. You, you know, it was customary at that time for, for teachers and people like a Pharisee to invite people over who were prophets or teachers to have conversation or a debate, if you might, uh, uh, of, about a topic. They, they invited Jesus in. He was interested in Jesus. Now, he wasn't fully surrendered to Jesus, but he was interested in Jesus. He invited Jesus into his home. Jesus was reclining at the table. And yes, dinner was being served. But the Pharisee did not wash Jesus' feet, which was a custom of that time. He didn't even have his servant wash Jesus' feet. Which, if there was somebody below you, you might say, servant, wash your feet. He didn't even give Jesus a bucket of water and say, wash your own feet. He didn't do any of that. See, he invited Jesus in. He said, recline at my table. You can eat. And he invited Jesus in, but there was still a distance between him and Jesus. They, they were not totally on the same page yet. They weren't in complete union with one another. He invited Jesus in, but wasn't completely surrendered. Now, when this woman arrived, this sinful woman, the man recognized, this Pharisee saw, she's a sinner. We don't know if he knew her. We don't know if he knew about her. We didn't know if uh, he's heard stories about her. We don't know if it was the way she was dressed. But we know that the Pharisee, the moment he saw her, he looked at her and knew she was a sinner. Now, see, as a Pharisee, he believed they were part of a Jewish group that believed in the law the Torah, and they also believed in the written, not only the written law, but the oral law, the, the, the traditions that were passed down for, to generation to generation that they lived. And so Jesus was there, and he was part of this time together. And this Pharisee was proper. He believed in making sure you look right, act right and in contrast came this woman who knew she wasn't right and everybody there knew she wasn't right she didn't observe the laws it seemed that maybe this Pharisee as you read the story he seemed to see himself as better than her he seemed to think that maybe she shouldn't be there in his house. He didn't like the idea that she was there. Maybe it seemed like he didn't like the idea that Jesus, if he was a prophet, couldn't tell that she was a sinner. Didn't know that she was a sinner. I don't think it seemed like he didn't like the idea that if Jesus did know he was a, uh, she was a sinner, that he'd be okay with her being there. And didn't like it that if she was touching Jesus. She was unclean. He was supposed to be clean, and now this is happening. This man, you could see, got discomfort. He started getting disappointment in what was happening with how Jesus was reacting in this situation. See, this man had an idea, probably. It seems like the story is alluding to the idea that he was thinking that Jesus would know she was a sinner. He would do something about the sinner. He would say the sinner has no place in the house, that the sinner had to go, that the sinner shouldn't be touching him, that the sinner didn't have to go, but that we should stick to the strict tradition that was passed down. And Jesus disappointed this Pharisee because Jesus didn't kick this woman out. Jesus didn't respond the way he thought she should. he should. He didn't have Jesus start preaching at her and tell her, of how bad she was. Instead, Jesus responded in love. This man struggled, this Pharisee struggled with who she was and what Jesus was doing. 
See, this man's attitude, this Pharisee's attitude was wrong toward the woman and with Jesus. And we have to realize that Jesus doesn't always fit our mold. He doesn't always fit into the box that we think he should. Jesus doesn't always react the way we think he is going to react. He doesn't always move the way we think he's going to move. Isn't that the truth? Has God allowed things to happen in your life over the years that you really were hoping Jesus wouldn't have allowed? Come on, say yes. That's the reality. Which means that God's ways are not necessarily our ways. We don't always understand God's ways. And God comes in our lives and he does things and it messes our lives up sometimes. <coughs> Excuse me, this Pharisee had this plan. I'm making dinner, I'm going to have him over, this is the way it's going to be. And then this woman shows up and everything goes messed up and Jesus doesn't fix it. Jesus doesn't handle it like I would have. Come on, doesn't Jesus do things the way you would? Or I would? Sometimes we feel that way in a relationship. And that was the attitude that he had with, with Jesus. Think about it. God doesn't always do things the way we think he should. You remember there was a time when a woman who was accused of adultery was brought before Jesus, and he started the story where he wrote on the ground. If you don't know it, look it up. But Jesus said to her, go. And she went. Remember one time Jesus spit on the ground and made mud and rubbed it on a blind man's eyes? Remember that? Come on, that's the first thing we would think of, right? Another time he went and spit on a man's face. That's not necessarily the way we would do it, right? One time Jesus told the disciples, hey, go out in a boat. Let's go. Knowing that a big storm was coming that could capsize the boat. Another time, Jesus told uh, impure spirits, leave that man and go in that herd of pigs. That's exactly what all of us would have done, right? No. He told Peter to get out of a boat and walk on water. He told the disciples to go on a journey without any supplies. What? He told uh, his disciples to heal people and cast out demons. Okay. He told his disciples to feed 5,000 men plus with five loaves and two fish. Okay. You guys get the point, right? Jesus doesn't always do things the way we would do it. He doesn't always do things the way that makes sense to us. And sometimes things get messy. Sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of a storm. Sometimes we find ourselves with nothing and desperate. Other times we find ourselves in impossible situations where only a miracle can come through. And that is how our God works. That is how Jesus works in our lives. And we see that, don't we? He doesn't always move the way we think he should move. When this Pharisee invited Jesus over, he had expectations of Jesus. He had expectations that things were going to go a certain way, look a certain way, and they didn't. And as you read the story, you can sense that there's a disappointment that comes on this Pharisee. Oh, if he only knew. You know, I've learned that when I go through disappointment, it's more difficult to praise. For me, it's been difficult in times to give thanks when God didn't do it the way I think he should have. When God didn't come through the ways that I would have liked him to. I can think of back in my life when there were times when I just was like, God, I need you to come through. I need you to come through. And really what I was saying is, is God, I want you to do this. In reality, God came through, but nothing like I thought he would. See, I have to put my hope, my expectation in God. I have to trust that Jesus is going to come through. But if I build up within me an expectation of something that is contrary to the way Jesus is going to move, I find myself getting disappointed 
Why is it different than I thought it would? Why is it changing? This is not within my plan. Any of you planners in the room? You like to plan things out? Any of you like to make lists? Yes. And then that list gets all messed up. And then you plan things and it didn't happen the way you wanted it to. Some of you, you're like, ah, I live every day like that. And others of us were like, oh, no. God doesn't always work according to our list. He has his own agenda. He has his own plan. And that's how God works. We look around in our lives and in the church and we look around and say, God's going to work this way. And then he doesn't. Sometimes we get disappointed, don't we? Sometimes we think it should look this way, feel this way, sound this way. And when it doesn't, we're disappointed. When our lives turn out differently than we thought they would, we feel disappointed. When we sit certain milestones in our life, when we hit 30 years old or 40 years old or 50 years old, when we turn 60 years old and we start looking back at life, not just looking forward and saying, where have I gone? Where, what have I done in my life? Sometimes it's frustrating. God, I thought you were going to do something more. I thought, God, you, were, you had something else in plan than where I am right now. Sometimes we get frustrated. We get disappointed. We, sometimes our relationships aren't what we hoped they would be. Sometimes our jobs aren't what they, we thought they would be. Sometimes God just doesn't move the way we expect him to. But we have to praise God and trust God that he knows better. And so we need to learn to trust that God's going to make a way, period. Amen. God's going to come through, period. God's going to be with me, period. God knows, hallelujah. And I will praise him, hallelujah. And I will love him, hallelujah. Because our God is an awesome God. I want you to think of this Pharisee. He got all frustrated and disappointed because Jesus didn't respond the way he wanted to. And in comes this sinful woman. Let's talk, look at this sinful woman just for a moment here. She came in. <clears throat> According to the story, she was living in sin, in sin, in something in her life. Sin was going on. She was not living the way she was supposed to. She was not forgiven. She was not delivered from this. She came in, but she knew that she needed Jesus. She knew she needed to be with Jesus. She knew she needed to get and be with Jesus. Notice that Jesus didn't go to her house. Notice that Jesus wasn't heading to her. He went to somebody totally else's house. It didn't matter. He was going to somebody totally opposite of this woman. He was going to a man's house who was a Pharisee. And there are other Pharisees around if you read the story in other Gospels. And, and oh no, this woman, it didn't matter. She was going to Jesus. It didn't matter what anybody else thought. It didn't matter what anybody else saw. It didn't matter any of that. She just knew she had to be with Jesus. Her attitude, her heart was, I'm just going to Jesus. I'm going to him because she saw where she was and she knew she needed to be with Jesus. Her life where it was before did not lead her to the place she needed to be. She needed to be at Jesus' feet. If you listened in the story there as we read it, did you catch that she was behind Jesus' feet? not in front. She was behind him. She was saying, Master, I'm going to follow you. And she wept because she knew her life was hurting. We don't know the pain she was in because you know sin hurts our lives, right? And it not only hurts our lives, it hurts our family's lives and it hurts the people's lives around us that we care about. Sin is evil and it destroys. And that's the plan of the devil but this woman knew that her life was down the wrong path and she knew it needed to change. She needed to get to Jesus. Didn't matter where or how, she got down behind him, behind his feet and just wept and wept and wept. And she poured oil on Jesus' feet. It didn't matter that it wasn't her job. It didn't matter that somebody else should have done that. It didn't matter because all she knew is, is that's where she needed to be. 
See, the Pharisee didn't put him place in his place there. The Pharisee did not get down on his hands and knees and did not wipe Jesus' feet. Instead, he wanted to put himself as an equal to Jesus. And they both reclined at the table as equal people at the table. And, and that's not this woman's approach. She got down on the floor, got down on his feet, and recognized who Jesus was. She didn't know what Jesus was going to do. She didn't know how Jesus was going to respond. She didn't know if the Pharisee was going to grab her and throw her out. She didn't know the scenario that was going to happen. She just believed that Jesus was the answer. The outcome, she was going to leave with him. Do you see the difference between her and the Pharisee? She put all of her hope in Jesus She put herself out there. She spent so much money on this perfume and just poured it on Jesus' feet. She she put herself out there in vulnerability among these Pharisees. She put herself in a place that was dangerous, in a place that was uncomfortable. But that's where Jesus was. Her expectation was not on how others would act or how Jesus would act, or how she wanted it to go. It was on one thing, I am going to bless Jesus, and that's what's going to happen. I'm going to bless him. She got down on her knees to his feet, and that was her attitude. And her attitude not only led her to being forgiven, It led to peace. It led to peace. Has anyone ever said to you, give thanks in all circumstances? And so you say, okay, God, I thank you for the situation that I'm in. Even though I'm not happy to be here and I don't like it and I wish it was different. Or maybe you didn't say that in part, but you thought it, right? Or felt it. No? Just me? There's not, not the peace there, right? I'm giving thanks, grudgingly. But in reality, we have to realize that we have to come to a place where we're saying, God is good, he is faithful, he's going to bring us through, and he's going to bring peace into my life when I just thank him for the circumstance, when I thank him for where he is, for where I am, and where I'm going to be. That my God is faithful. He knows down the road. You know, I grew up in the business world, and, and, and you know, they love asking questions like, so where do you see yourself in five years? You remember those questions? What's your, what are your long-range plans? And in the business world, you can factor and plan, and, but, but none of that is for sure, Right? It's dreams, it's goals, it's planning, and the church even plans. You know, you got to do some planning. But, you know, when it comes to God, none of us knows. And we can lay out expectations and say, this is how it's going to be. But with God, it doesn't always work that way. All of a sudden, God says, no, 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 no. Today, I'm going to a Pharisee's house, and I'm going to meet a sinful woman there, and I'm going to give her forgiveness and place peace on her. Pharisee expecting that? No. Maybe this woman wasn't even expecting what was going to happen. What about all the other guests? God had a plan that was different from all of their plans. I look in my life and I could say, God, I didn't like that situation I was in and I remember praying, God, get me out of the situation. God, why am I here? Whose fault is it? God, whatever it takes. And sometimes looking back years later, you kind of say, I'm beginning to see why maybe God allowed me in that. But sometimes you don't. You don't know. But God knows. We got to trust that he has a plan. And we have to trust that God's going to bring us through. And we have to trust that, that God, he loves us. And it doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter who each of you are. God loves you. You might be looking at the story today and be saying, I'm kind of like that Pharisee. Or maybe you're like one of the onlookers. And you're saying, I'm expecting God to do something and he's not acting the way I think he should. 
Give him thanks that he's there. Give him thanks that he has a plan and let him do what he wants. Maybe you're like this woman and you're like, God, I don't know what you're gonna do, but I know one thing, I need to be at your feet today. I need to be laid before you and I just need to know that I am with you and you are with me and that we are right. That there's nothing in between us. I need to know that you are real and I need you to know that I am committed to you. And no matter what the outcome is, it's gonna be okay. Because you are faithful. As we come to a time of prayer, I encourage you to look at what's going on in your life. Just, just think about it for a moment. I mean, we can look around the world and there's a lot going on. We can look at our country and there's a lot of unrest. There's a lot of pain, there's a lot of hurt. A lot being said, a lot being done. We can look and we see COVID. And we all have different thoughts. But I want you to know, in the midst of it all, God is there. He's here with us. Our God is faithful, and he is going to bring us through. And it might not look the way we think it should look, and it might not all come together like we think it ought to, and it might not take the time that we think it should, and the results might not be exactly the way we think it all should have worked out. Because if it were up to me, it would look a lot different now. But my God is faithful. My God is here. And I'm going to trust him. Hallelujah. No matter what comes, no matter what tomorrow brings, no matter what changes, no matter what gets better or what seems to get worse, no matter how difficult it is and no matter what he gives and no matter what he takes away and no matter what the enemy does and no matter how much he fights, my God is faithful, and he's going to bring me through. And today I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to put all my hope and trust in you, that you have something bigger planned, that you have something more than I can think. And so I praise you, Lord. I believe that you know more than we could ever ask or imagine. I believe that today. I believe, Lord, that my ways are not your ways. And your ways aren't my ways. So, Lord, I'm going to trust you that you know. <laughs> and, God, it hurts. And, God, it's uncomfortable at times. And, God, I really don't want to go through these circumstances. But I trust you. And so today I thank you. I thank you for where I am. I thank you for where you brought us. I thank you for what's ahead. And I thank you. I praise you.